Now, with ceasefire efforts at the UN failing, the war in Gaza continues to rage. The US has squarely blamed Russia and China for the ceasefire resolution at the UN failing through calling their veto move pure politics. Well, the two countries vetoed a US-backed UN resolution calling for a truce, a move that the White House says is politically motivated. This was a balanced, timely text, and it is in line with our long-standing calls for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza over a period of at least six weeks as part of a hostage deal. Nothing new there. The vast majority of the council voted in favor of the resolution, some 11 other nations. Unfortunately, Russia and China vetoed it. That was hardly a surprise. They'd rather shoot down something that we authored simply because we authored it, rather than consider the strength of what it called for with overwhelming council support. The showdown comes as the U.S. has before this vetoed ceasefire resolutions thrice in the past. Russian ambassador to U.N. has said that they are in line with wanting a ceasefire. However, he criticized the quote-unquote diluted language used by the Security Council. Meanwhile, the United it's Nations a chief Antonio Guterres is set to visit the Egypt-Gaza border city of Rafah on Saturday. The visit is a part of the Secretary General's annual Ramadan solidarity trip. Guterres will meet with aid workers on the Egyptian side of the city, which is also a key gateway for aid supplies to reach the besieged strip. He is also slated to visit Egypt's El Arish hospital, which sits close to the Gaza border. Israel has also reiterated that it will attack Al Shifa, which is the largest medical complex in the strip, where most medical facilities have been flattened by Israeli bombardments so far. Now, ahead of the ceasefire vote in UN, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visited Tel Aviv in hopes to expedite true stocks. Friday's visit was aimed at mounting pressure over Prime Minister Netanyahu to stop the war. Around 1.5 million people are crowded in Rafah. Blinken added that there was no way for the Hamas civilians to escape the offensive. It risks further isolating Israel uh, around the world and jeopardizing its long-term security and standing. So. We're looking forward to having Israeli officials in Washington next week to talk about a different way of achieving these objectives, objectives that we share, of defeating Hamas and ensuring Israel's long-term security. Uh, it really requires an integrated humanitarian, uh, military and political plan. During his visit, Blinken also met with anti-war protesters in Tel Aviv. Video footage showed the families of hostages and other demonstrators thanking the U.S. Secretary of State for continued ceasefire efforts. However, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel will carry out a ground offensive in Gaza's Rafah with or without U.S. support in order to defeat Hamas. But I also said that we have no way to defeat Hamas without entering Rafah and eliminating the rest of the battalions there. And I told him that I hope we will do it with the support of the United States, but if we have to, we will do it alone.